Please fasten your seatbelt, sir. We're about to take off. Have you ever wondered what it was like to fly when seats were more like couches and meals were a gourmet affair? Imagine relaxing in a piano lounge mid-flight or breezing through simple security checks. Today, we will talk about 10 vintage travel features from the golden age of flying. Revisiting the American Revined Era of Yesteryear. Welcome to American Vintage Tales. If you're curious how air travel used to be, don't forget to subscribe. Piano Lounges. Let's talk about an airplane where you could play Pong in a pub. Yes, people actually play Pong at a table while flying. And this wasn't in some fancy first-class area. It was in coach. Can you believe it? Coach lounge passengers had this fun while first-class enjoyed buffets. Makes you wonder, what changed? We're talking about the times of the wide-body DC-10 back in the 60s and 70s. Those days, big planes like the DC-10 and the 747 were competing to be the coolest. They offered passengers lots of room, tasty food, and even huge lounges and pubs. Imagine having a piano bar right there in coach. It's true, coach lounge passengers had access to a piano bar. It was a unique feature, with only one airline offering it. But look at flying today. You're stuck in a tight seat the whole trip. There's hardly any room to move, barely anything decent to eat or drink, and you're squeezed next to other passengers. Think about a guy whose only problem was his friends eating his popcorn, and he even got more popcorn. So, what went wrong? This isn't just about the comfort on planes getting worse. It's about the entire history of the airline industry. It makes you question if the glamorous days of flying were actually better. Powder Room A powder room was a lavishly designed and spacious restaurant room facility available on the aircraft. Unlike the compact and purely functional lavatories we see in airplanes today, these powder rooms were more akin to luxurious lounges or dressing rooms. This could include reapplying makeup, fixing their hair, or simply taking a moment to relax away from their seat. Gourmet meals. You're on a plane being served a gourmet dinner as if you were dining in a luxury restaurant. In the golden age of flying, air travel was synonymous with culinary excellence. Passengers enjoyed elaborate multi-course meals crafted by expert chefs. Imagine savoring carved roast beef or turkey presented on elegant china with real silverware. It was more than a meal, it was an event. In first-class cabins of airlines like Olympic Airways, even the cutlery was gold-plated, adding to the opulence. Sleeper seats and small beds. The Boeing 377 Stratocruiser offered a level of comfort that was unprecedented at the time. The aircraft featured sleep seats, which were much more spacious and comfortable than the standard airline seats we see today. One of the most unique features of the Boeing 377 Stratocruiser was the inclusion of small beds, known as berths, in place of the overhead hat racks. These berths were similar to the sleeping compartments found in train travel at the time. They were essentially bunk beds positioned above the seats. During night flights, curtains could be drawn around these berths to provide privacy. This arrangement allowed passengers to sleep in an actual bed, rather than just reclining in a seat. Spacious seats. Imogene being on a plane where stretching out was easy, not a game of twists and turns. Back in the 1940s, flying was a spacious affair. The seats weren't just seats. They were like cozy sofas, offering plenty of legroom and width. This meant travelers could truly relax and savor their journey, surrounded by an air of luxury. Air travel wasn't just about getting from one place to another. It was an experience in itself. Airlines prioritize making passengers feel at ease, not just fitting as many people as possible. The space between seats or the seat pitch was a generous 36 to 40 inches, a far cry from today's cramped 28 inches. Fashion attire and the fashion. Flying wasn't a casual affair, it was akin to a high-altitude fashion show. Passengers dressed to impress, with men in suits and ties and women in chic dresses and hats, elevating air travel to a prestigious occasion. Flight attendants, then known as stewardesses, donned uniforms designed by fashion icons like Christian Dior and Chanel, adding to the glamour. This era made flying a stylish and unforgettable experience.
spots, with some airlines even hosting fashion shows in the aisles, showcasing the era's fashion-forward spirit. Tarmac boarding, stepping off an airplane, used to feel like making a grand entrance. The four jet bridges became the norm, disembarking meant walking down air stairs or a mobile stairway directly onto the tarmac. This experience gave passengers a moment of fame, feeling the fresh air and taking in the airport surroundings up close. Air stairs were a staple feature in many aircraft, including the iconic Boeing 727 and McDonnell Douglas DC-9. Elegant design. Did you ever imagine that airplanes could have their own spiral staircases? When commercial aviation first took to the skies, it wasn't just about transportation. It was a leap in architectural design. The aesthetics of aviation heavily influenced both airport structures and aircraft interiors. Take the Boeing 747, introduced in 1970, for example. This aircraft wasn't merely a means of travel. It was a marvel of design, featuring a two-story layout connected by an elegant spiral staircase. Its spacious cabins could accommodate over 500 passengers, making it a symbol of grandeur in the sky. The impact of aviation design extended beyond the clouds, influencing ground structures as well. A prime example is the TWA terminal at JFK Airport, designed by Eero Saarinen, which beautifully mimics the form of a bird in flight. Flight engineers. Flight engineers were once as vital to air travel as pilots. These professionals, also known as air engineers, played a crucial role in managing an aircraft's intricate systems. They didn't pilot the aircraft, but were responsible for monitoring and controlling critical aspects, like the engines and other essential flight systems from a specialized panel. Working in tandem with pilots, especially during crucial phases like takeoff, flight, and landing, flight engineers ensured everything operated seamlessly. In the past, their presence was indispensable for larger aircraft. However, with the advent of modern technology, computers have largely taken over their functions. The last major U.S. passenger airline to employ flight engineers was Northwest Airlines, which phased out its last engineer-equipped planes in 2009. Airplane postcards. In the golden era of flying, passengers had the unique opportunity to send postcards from thousands of feet in the air. Airlines provided special postcards for travelers to pen their experiences or simply send a greeting from above the clouds. These postcards, mailed after landing, were a charming way to connect across distances in an era before smartphones and the internet. Today, these in-flight postcards have become rare and sought-after collectibles, valued for their distinctive history and the nostalgic charm they embody. Simple security. There was a time when boarding a plane was as simple and hassle-free as catching a bus. Airport security back then was remarkably relaxed compared to today's standards. Imagine not having to arrive at the airport hours in advance, not needing to remove your shoes for inspection, or not worrying about the amount of liquids in your carry-on. Back in those days, the idea of installing metal detectors in airports was met with concern as airlines feared it would intimidate passengers and infringe on their privacy. However, this laid-back approach to security gradually evolved, particularly in response to an increasing number of hijackings. From May 1961 to the end of 1972, the U.S. airspace witnessed 159 aircraft hijackings, highlighting the need for tighter security measures. The first airport to implement metal detectors was New Orleans International Airport in 1970, marking a significant shift towards the stringent security protocols we are familiar with today. Onboard smoking. Air travel in the past was akin to being in a flying lounge, where smoking was not just permitted but quite commonplace. Many flights had designated smoking areas, allowing passengers to freely enjoy their cigarettes or cigars. It's hard to believe now, but smoking right in the cabin seats was a normal sight, often filling the air with smoke. This was a time before the full health implications of smoking were widely recognized, so it was a regular part of air travel. Flight attendants would even distribute cigarettes as part of the onboard service. The last flight in the U.S. where smoking was allowed took off in 2000, closing a chapter in aviation history. If you've enjoyed this journey into the past with our American Vintage Tales video, don't forget to check out our next one. And remember, if you like what you see, hit the subscribe button, leave a comment, and give us a thumbs up.